Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. It's time for us to have our first guest in the studio. And I'm very excited because, of course, I am pro-female. Uh, shout out to the men. We are not dissing you. We love you and we respect you. And I'm pro-men too. But today we are very excited to be joined by Chizoba Barbie Madu, popularly known as DJ Barbie, as she shares with us her talent, her skill, and her journey in the entertainment industry with us. Thank you for joining us, DJ Barbie. All right, can you please speak up? Your voice is sort of faint and we're not... Can you hear me now? Yes, that's better. That's much better. How are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. But I'm not asking the generic how are you like we ask because, you know, we expect people to just say fine. I'm asking because right now I don't assume that anybody is fine until they tell me that they are. There's COVID-19, there's been lots of deaths on social media, you know, and a lot of people are starting to neg have more negative thoughts. How have you been handling all of this? Um, well, I've just been home and uh, I've just been looking after myself and also checking out my loved ones and trying to keep clean with sanitization as well. So that's just it. There's nothing I can do about the COVID-19 uh, pandemic for now, but uh, just to stay far away from others and to clean. Thank you. And, and that, that's a good mindset. You know, the fact that whatever you cannot do anything about, don't worry about. So you do the best that you can. Worry is like a rocking chair that gives us an illusion of movement. You're just moving like this, but you're not actually going anywhere. So well done for keeping your mental space clear and keeping in touch with your family. Uh, DJ Bambi, tell us about the choice, you know, of your name. What informed the choice of your, your performing name? Uh, the name DJ Bambi. Yes. I know you're cheese about Barbie. So is Barbie your name? But what I'm asking is because sometimes people infuse their stage names into their na real names. Okay, so is Barbie yeah. like yours as well? Yeah, Barbie okay. is mine. Okay. And I, I use the DJ, yes. I just added DJ Barbie to it so I could be more comfortable knowing full of that. Uh, I'm bearing something I know I bear, like it is my name, something people call me, instead of something else that I'm trying to get used to, so that's it. How long have you been a DJ for? Uh, for four to five years now. Nice. And tell us, tell us about the journey, how it all started. <laughs> uh, the journey has been wonderful. It has been great. Uh, it was tough at first, but uh, the higher I go, the less of the stress. So uh, it's been awesome. And it's been a very huge experience for me. Hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, great. So, when w w tell us about what informed you to actually become a DJ. How did you start? Who, you know, what what, what was it? Tell t tell us about that journey of getting into the business of being a disc jockey. Uh, okay, so since I was eight, I've always wanted to be a DJ. So it's uh, it's passion. It's something that I wanted to become. It's not like it's something I just wanted to try out. You no. Know? I knew I was going to be a DJ at some point. So I had to wait till I was of age and I could handle myself. So um, as a few years ago, when I felt like, yeah, this is the moment, this is the time, I think I'm ready. I had to go get my equipment, my laptop and every other thing, got myself a manager and I kicked off from there. That was how I started. Now, looking at the, the, the entertainment industry, there are several DJs that have risen to prominence. Has there been anyone that you would say has been a part of your story? Because sometimes we hear people that say, oh, today I'm here where I am because so and so person believed in me or this person contributed to my, to my career in this way or that way. Is there any DJ that you can say, you can say that about? Yeah, uh, a lot of them actually have been part of my story and I can't begin mention names but there is one particular person that has helped me so much and uh, i really really appreciate a whole lot and his name is uh, dj chibino and uh, one other person i respect a lot in the industry as well is uh, dj Neptun. so they've all been there for me at some point uh, in the journey and so i really really appreciate them those are the two people that have been very very effective okay that's nice. When you, talk, when you like to, I, of course, you enjoy what you do, but I'm sure that there are certain events you enjoy DJing better at than other events. 
just like with MCs and event planners, some event planners yeah. will tell you they prefer planning weddings to other events. What are your favorite type of events to DJ? Uh, my favorite events are the best DJ. Yeah, the kind of events you love to DJ more than others. Are they weddings oh. or, <laughs> or, or concerts, comedy shows, clubs? What are the, what, what, where do you feel like your creative juice comes alive the most? Okay, uh, for me, I notice that whenever I'm on stage, I'm more of myself and I'm very happy compared to normal parties and clubs. So I feel that like when I'm on stage doing concerts like events, it, it doesn't have to really be a concert that uh, is being um, handled by by some artists and all that. Mostly comedy events too. I can still be on stage. So any event that has to bring me out on stage, I really show myself. It brings me, it brings who I am out, and I'm always happy to handle such events. So any event that has to do on stage, nah, that's me. I'm so okay with you, that. you like, so if I'm correct, if I'm correct, you like the, the adrenaline that comes from the live response as you're playing, from the stage, you're feeding off the energy of the crowd. Yes. Has there ever the been a point where you were nervous on stage or where you had stage fright whilst performing? Um, yes, and that was when I started newly. For the first year, the first one year of my career, I was still trying to get used to the crowd. I was still trying to connect. I was still trying to vibe. So, yeah, that was bad, but not now. Right now, I could just go on stage and I could look everybody in the eye and, and do what I'm doing. But before, I, I used to be shy a bit. So, <laughs> that was bad then. As much as we're talking about the good days, let's talk about the bad days. What's the worst thing that's happened to you as a DJ? Have there been days when you are performing on stage and they are booing you or they are throwing sashes at you and telling you get off the stage? And no, of course, I'm not hoping that that has happened. But what are some of the, the crazy things that have happened to you that made you go and think, I'm not sure I want to do this? Okay, yes. That was the first day, the first time I ever DJed in my life. Um, I totally messed up. I wasn't ready. And I just wanted to go there and you know, show my skills that went through the difficult. I think I was I was in a hurry, that was the thing. I was in a hurry and I wasn't able to do my job well. So that day on stage, I totally messed up. I couldn't deliver, I couldn't uh, perform well as a DJ and everybody got tired of me and I noticed it. People were just walking around, people were discussing and it was like I was invincible on stage. So that day was like the worst day of my life ever. Then I gave a second thought, I was like, am I really ready? And I didn't DJ again for like one week. I threw my equipment away, kept my laptop somewhere, I couldn't stay it, and I just gave up. But my manager was like, no, this is just your first time trying. And I felt you weren't ready, so you have to be ready. And the next time uh, there's a show, I'll put you on Instagram and perform. And the second time I did well. And that motivated me to continue. So that was just once. So in that, in that moment, it was your manager that actually helped you, uh, pulled you up yeah. emotionally? Because I was down. Oh, that, that's, that's great. That's great. Okay, so Lena, we've talked about the lows. Let's talk about the real high moments. You know, where, what were those moments that you performed or that you saw yourself and you thought, I can't believe this is me. I can't believe that I'm here. <laughs> Okay, there are so many moments of my life as a DJ on stage, you know, that really brought me to life and feel like I could do so many more wonderful things. Uh, in Sierra Leone, there was an Echo Fest in Sierra Leone. I had like, I had massive crowd. I couldn't even count. There was so much that there was no space. And uh, I did, and I didn't really break my dress, but the little I gave them was like one. Well, I was like, oh, okay. Actually, do this. So they were all vibing. Everybody was dancing, and I was looking at the crowd. They were happy, and I, I loved the way they were happy. I felt like, okay, this is my job, really, and I need to continue this because a lot of people came here not happy, having things in their mind, but right now they're forgotten about everything, and they're happy, and the music is making them dance. So I was really, really excited. I was happy to like the next one month. <laughs> I was super excited because of that. So that was uh, one moment of my life that really made me happy as a DJ and I felt like I have to do more to 
make these people happy. I need to keep doing this. This is me. This is what I'm made of. So that was uh, one of the moments in my life that I really, really felt like, yes, it was very wonderful to me. Then another one was um, Worry Again as well. Worry Again. That was asking. So that was another concept. I felt like, yes, I'm good. I'm really good at this. Now you've seen, <coughs> we've seen that you finding out that you're playing and people are happy makes you, you know, you're excited. You're grateful that they're actually happy. You're, you're happy that people are happy. But apart from DJing, exactly. what makes you happy? Um, I just love music. Music makes me happy. Making other people happy makes me happy. So that is it. I love music and I just love helping people. If I could make you smile, make you happy, I feel okay. I'm happy. So that's me. Amazing. Okay, let's talk about the days that you're performing at a stage. And because I'm sure that even as uh, someone who's done this for a while, there are some bad days. And there are days when you're performing and you are feeling like the crowd is not feeling you as much as you would expect. How do you deal with it? How are you able to condition yourself through that ordeal? Maybe you're performing at a wedding, you're DJing at a wedding, and the crowd is not giving you the energy that you want. How do you deal with that? Um, okay. Well, what I do is I change the vibe I came with. That's what I do. If I came with another vibe and I see you're not feeling this, I think uh, I usually increase the tempo of the music and give them something they can sing along because there are songs that are classic songs. They might be old, but these are songs that they love to hear because they don't hear them every time, especially old songs that they don't get to hear every time. So when you bring back such classic songs then, that they know um, what to wear and they can buy and sing along with. I think that lifts their spirit and they're like, okay, you know. So from there, you keep on going up, going up, going up, so they're ready to dance. So that's what I do. I bring back classic songs, old songs that they can remember and they love. So that's I, I also of, remember, yeah. as we were talking about that, I just remembered, this is how we do it. And everybody exactly. just goes into that school by <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about, uh, you know, basically clients' demands. Do you get situations where a client calls you and tells you, DJ Babi, I want you to DJ my event, but please make sure you don't play so-and-so type of song. These are the only kind of songs. Do you get specifications? I want you to play only gospel songs, or I want you to play only 80s music. Anything outside of that, I don't want. Or I don't want, I want you to play only Malia music, or I don't want you to play any Malia music. Strictly gospel song. Have you ever gotten specifications like that? Yeah, sometimes. Um, but such events, they are not really um, events that I have to be on stage. Some of them are mostly um, some private events or um, parties that get together and stuff. They're like, this is what they want to listen to. Oh, and yeah, what would you say are some of the most requests, the, the most frequent requests that you get? Uh, when it comes to music? Yep. Um, well, a lot of them, some they love oldies, like the 90s, and uh, they love um, the recent Malian music, according to what they call it. So, that, yeah, so uh, Afrobeats, Afrobeats music. Oh, okay. And okay. The 90s. And, but do you find it annoying when people come to request for songs? Because I'm also guilty of this. The DJ is giving you one. Ah, when is DJ going to drop? Nobody, nobody. We don't go there, DJ. DJ, nobody. DJ Neptune and uh, easy. It's that easy. Then the moment the DJ drops the song, me and my friends and I will shout and we will dance. But the same way I have requests that I want in the party is the same way 100 other people have songs that they want. So how do you deal with multiple requests from the people who came to party or who came to the wedding coming to tell you, DJ, play the song. DJ, play that song. <laughs> okay. Um... It's very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> we apologize. I don't like it. I just <laughs> listen to you so that you don't have me as rude. But if I feel like, yeah, the song is a nice one, and yeah, it's an idea as well. They can still come up, well, please, can you play this? But some people feel like they are entitled to the song, and I'm like, really? Okay. So it's very annoying, but sometimes if I'm not past that tempo, because some people don't understand that some songs are actually lower than some songs. So if I've passed that particular tempo, I want me to go back down. I'm sorry, I can't. 
but I've not gotten there yet, and you make a request for a son that is there, and I'm like, okay. So DJ, when Bobby, I'm forget I'm this thing that you're saying. If I'm inside the <laughs> party and you are the DJ, by the time I come, first of all, you will see that I'm the one that is giving you the most energy because when you are playing music, I'll be the one dancing in front. So if me that is your lead choreographer in the party now comes and tells you, ah, DJ, please give me this vibe, you will consider it because you will think, ah, this girl has been giving me the energy that I want because I would have been there dancing seriously if I would come and start making special requests. So, <laughs> let's talk about what you would do if you were not a DJ. Okay. Wow, I've been doing a lot still. If I wasn't a DJ, I think I would... Uh, I'd have been a criminologist. You'd be a what? A criminologist, full-time criminologist. Okay, why? Why'd you say that? Um, because that's also something I love. I, when I was small, I used to watch uh, movies that has to do with crimes, law and order. So I think that's something I also love to do. And I've been a criminologist or a lawyer. It's not too late. Um, you, can, you can still pursue a degree in law as a part-time plan, or, or maybe not part-time, because law takes a lot of your time, but it's something that you can still look into. Let's talk about how you're adjusting to COVID right now. As a DJ, you're not going to play at parties, you're not going to play at weddings, you're not going to play at events, because none of these things are, are happening. How are you able to adjust and keep up with uh, modern best practices? Okay, really deep down, I'm not happy, because I'm not doing what I love to do. I'm not making people happy and I'm not making my money. Very, very important to have my bills to pay. But um, this is something that is all over the world. So it's not like I'm the only person that is affect affecting everybody. So I've been at home. I've been um, getting better at what I do. My skills, my music, everything. So I have this um, um, Instagram live I do. I go live with artists and that's a, it's called 20 Minutes with DJ Babi. So I go live with artists and then um, the vibe to their song while I play. So I've done some with uh, different artists as well. Something that's been keeping me busy in the house and been keeping some of my fans and followers engaged. So uh, those are basically the two things I've been doing. Practice playing and getting better at my skills and 20 Minutes to Life with DJ Babi on Instagram. So that's it. Okay. We know that some DJs are attached to personal artists, so you, you know that for a for this person, this is their DJ. Are you assigned to any artist? No, I'm not. Would you like to be assigned to any artist? Um, no, for now, no. Okay. And we're also I'm seeing a new trend of DJs jumping into the music space and dropping their own songs. We've seen DJ Exclusive do it over and over again. We recently did DJ Neptune and uh, Mr. Huh? Easy with Nobody. That's a mad hit, like a jam. Yeah. Are we expecting to see something like that from you soon? Yes, definitely. Why not? Yes, definitely. So tell us about the artists you like to collaborate with, because you are not singing, you are DJing. <laughs> yeah, um, a, a lot of them. I have a lot of them I really love to work with. It doesn't necessarily have to be immediately, but with time. I really can't mention. <laughs> ah. I really can't mention. Okay. All right, DJ Bobby. But it's been a delight having you. Thank you so much. Before I let you go, uh, what would you okay. say about the female DJs in the DJ industry? Oh, would I say about that? Yeah. What, do you have friends? You know, are you, what's your relationship like with the other female DJs? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I met a couple of them, and uh, I'm really, really happy to see other female DJs doing so well in uh, a male-dominated industry. So uh, they are really catching up. Uh, they are really smart and beautiful as well. I'm very intelligent DJs with men, so I'm, I'm really, really happy that I'm not the only person doing this. And uh, some of them are my friends as well. We hang out, we talk about music. So it's been exciting knowing that there are other female DJs I know that are in the industry and they are doing so well. Who are your favorite female DJs? Apart from yourself, of uh, course. <laughs> um, uh, well, okay, so there, there are so many of them. <laughs> 
some are not really in Nigeria. It doesn't and, matter. Uh, some are not in Nigeria, some are uh, in African countries around um, Africa. Um, but here in Nigeria, I think uh, Inju Switch is like one of my favorites. She's really, really good. She's really, really good. Okay. All right. Thank you, DJ Barbie, for joining us. We wish you all the best in your career. We hope that COVID comes to an end soon and that life can return back to our normal so we can go to the par go to the parties and the one base and the turn-ups and then you get to do your thing scratching with your fingers. All right? Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Okay, we've just been speaking with uh, DJ Barbie, who's shared with us her talent, her journey into being a DJ, what this means for her, as well as some other uh, facts, some, some unknown facts about